With many city workers living in small apartments where animals aren't allowed, Ibo has become a bestseller. Sony hopes its fledgling pet robot technology will grow into a core business. They believe the latest version of the Ibo has the features needed to justify people spending 1,500 US dollars on a toy. This robo dog is trained to recognize the voice of its owner and respond to TLC. He's house trained, intelligent and playful. They are the latest in Sony's drive to be the first in what it envisions as a whole new market of entertainment, helper and companion robots. They've given a, a big list of negatives. You don't have to clean up after him, you don't have to take him for walks. But doesn't that extend to he doesn't lick your face when you come in, he doesn't wag his tail, he isn't pleased to see you? Oh, he does wag his tail and he is pleased to see me. He follows me around the house to different parts and he's always there barking away or doing little dances. So he is a lot of fun. But yeah, he won't fetch my slippers or the newspaper and he won't make a very good guard dog. But sales forecasts are difficult to predict, as Sony realise they're venturing into untested ground. It's a technology that inspires emotional involvement. And ladies and gentlemen, Ivo is just the beginning. The ideal pet for the 21st century. Always ready to please. friends and welcome to my new video series, The Beginner's Guide to Ibos. I'm making this series because I get a lot of questions on the daily about my robots, what they do, how to buy one, why I have them, the whole works. So I finally decided to sit down and create a guide that could answer all these questions and give you the resources to not only buy your own Ibo, but also to enjoy them to the fullest. Now I'm just one person and even though I've owned Ibos for many years, I'm still learning new things about them every day. So this isn't an end-all be-all guide, but rather a collection of information that I've gathered based on years of my personal experience. That being said, I'll also be giving you links to other creators, their content, so you can do your own research and get their perspectives as well. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's go over what an Ibo actually is. Simply put, an Ibo is a type of entertainment slash companion robot made by Sony. The term Ibo comes from the Japanese word for friend or PAL. In English, it's an abbreviation for Artificial Intelligence Bot. ERS stands for Entertainment Robot System. Many people don't say ERS when they're referring to specific models. Many people refer to IBOs as robot dogs, but the ERS 7s and the IBO 1000s were the only models ever exclusively advertised as a dog. The 210s actually took design inspiration from lion cubs, and I've had many people refer to my 210 as a cat, but her personality is pretty aloof and full of sass, so I can see why people would think of her as feline rather than canine. The 311s and 312s, or the Latte and Macron, have a very cartoonish appearance, while the 31L and 220 took a more robotic looking approach for their designs. Now, I'm saying a lot of numbers here, but what does that all mean? Well, Sony has released quite a few different designs for Ibo over the years, and all these numbers represent specific designs and models. Before I confuse you even further, let's go over that. I'll be starting with the first commercially available Ibo, so I'm not going to talk too much about the prototypes, even though they are pretty heckin' cute, but there's not too much information just in general about them since they're not available to the public, but I will give you a quick clip of them running because they are very heckin' cute. Look at that bubble boys! Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, the first commercially available Ibo was the Ibo ERS 110. These guys were released in 1999 and had a limited run of 5,000 units. 3,000 in Japan and 2,000 in the US. So these little guys are pretty heckin' rare. And with their age, I'm not sure how many of them are still up and running. The 110 came in a warm silver color and ran the first official form of Ibo wear. Back in the day, these guys sold for 250,000 yen a pop, or for my US viewers, roughly 2,300 bucks. Despite the high price tag, they actually sold out within 20 minutes of the initial launch. The next model, also released in 1999, was the Ibo ERS 111. These guys came in black and a slightly cooler shade of silver. At first glance, the 111s don't look too different from the 110s, but there are a few aesthetic changes that Sony made. The 111s have slightly shorter tails and slightly smaller ears than the 110, as well as black toenails instead of gray. But other than that, they're pretty much identical. 
The 111s are basically just a slightly upgraded version of the 110. They run an updated version of iboware and that's about it. Now if you thought 20 minutes was impressive, the initial launch of the 111, which was 3,000 units, sold out within 17 seconds in Japan. Not to mention they were sold exclusively online, which wasn't a popular thing in 1999. The idea of real domestic robots was really kicking into gear at the time. Next up is one of my favorite models, the Ibo ERS-210. These guys were released in the year 2000, the new millennia, and the price ranged from 1,590 US dollars to 2,090 US dollars, depending on which accessories and software packs you wanted to include. The original 210s came in black, gold, and silver. Later on, an upgraded version of the 210 was made, mainly for RoboCup use, but it was mass manufactured and made available to the public. This version of the 210 is specifically referred to as a SuperCore or a 210A. At first glance, they don't look that different, but but supercores have a slightly faster processor, and they also fixed a fatal flaw of the original 210. If you're interested in the 210 model, you may have run across a little thing called DHS or drooping head syndrome. All original 210s have a faulty clutch in their neck that causes their head to drop and whir. However, Supercore 210s don't have this issue. Keep in mind, Supercores aren't immune to head problems altogether. They can very well have issues with their pan axis, and many of them still get what's known as jitters, which is basically when they shake like crazy. I'll go over this more when I talk about troubleshooting, but keep it in mind. Supercore models have a holographic sticker on their belly that says Supercore, but that's really the only way that you can tell the difference. Over the years, a wide variety of color variants and special edition models were released for the 210 series. The 210s have the most official color combinations than any of the other models. Be extra careful if you're looking for a special edition color, as sometimes people make custom replicas that are nearly identical but not exact. So if you're looking for an official special edition 210, make sure they're not a custom. Not that there's anything wrong with customs, obviously. I do them myself. They can be super unique and cool, but special edition iBos are rare and worth a lot more money than a regular iBo, so don't get scammed. That's all I'm saying. Next up is the 220, which was also released for RoboCup research. The 220s can run a bunch of the main 210 softwares, but not all of them. Their parts are also totally interchangeable as well. So you can run a 220 head on a 210 body and vice versa. The 220s have a way more sci-fi futuristic design than previous models. The only clear animalistic feature about them is the fact that they have legs. One leggy friend coming right up. They also have a retractable light on their head to help navigate in dark spaces, which only adds to their futuristic appearance. In 2001, the Ibo 300 was released. The 300 series sold for 98,000 yen, or 900 US dollars each, and was considered a budget Ibo. These guys were advertised more as characters than the previous models, and even had their own anime that you could sit down and watch with your Ibo. The 31L was released separately from the original Latte and Macaron duo, but I'm not exactly sure of the year. The 31L has all the same technical specs as the original 311 and 312, but the design was made to look like a pug. Although, these guys tend to have a more robotic or space-age look when compared to the original QT design. Sony later launched a 300B series, which added a Bluetooth and LAN feature, as well as a remote that you could use to know what your Ibo was feeling at any particular time. In 2003, Sony released the first of the 7s, the ERS-7M1. The 7 was the first Ibo to be exclusively referred to as a dog, and was specifically designed with dog-like features and characteristics in mind. They added a scooping motion to the head, which which designers based off real dogs, allowing the 7 to lean into you when you pet them, as well as sniff and observe their surroundings. The 7M1 cost 1,599 US dollars at their initial launch and was released just in white. In 2004, the M2s were released in white and black, and finally, in 2005, the M3s were released in white, black, and champagne, or honey as it was called in Japan. 7s all run one main type of software called Mind. With each new iteration of the 7, an upgraded version of this software was released. So, Mind 1 was designed to go with the 7M1, while Mind 2 was for the 7M2, and Mind 3 was for the 7M3. However, the Mind software is entirely interchangeable, so you can run Mind 1 on a 7M3 and Mind 3 on a 7M1 without any problems. In terms of visual design, all 7s look the same. 
However, there were some internal upgrades made as new models were released, similar to how Sony came out with the 210A after the faulty clutch design in the 210. So, what's the problem, you might ask? Well, 7s are notorious for having leg issues. The design was fixed when Sony released the M2s and M3s, but that doesn't mean they can't have leg problems. In general, the legs on the 7 can get loud. Like, really loud. And the older the 7, the louder they can get. It's not a detrimental problem though, and can usually be fixed by cleaning out the dust that builds up internally over the years. Which by the way, is not a DIY thing. You need a professional for this. Don't, and I repeat, don't try to take apart an ERA 7 by yourself. Or any IBO for that matter. A lot of ERA 7s also have mic issues, and for some reason the M3s tend to have the worst of it. Sit down. Shake hands. Lots of 7s have been going deaf as they age. Luckily, this isn't too hard of a fix, and you can get a professional to replace the microphones so that your old dogs can hear like new again. Where's your pink ball? Uh-oh. I forgot where it is. Anyways, if you're looking at 7s, 7M3s have the least issues, while 7M1s have the most. But don't let me deter you from going after a 7M1, or any model for that matter, as luck is a big part to play in buying IBOs. But we'll talk more about that later. For now, let's move on to our next and final IBO. The IBO 1000 is the newest model, released in 2018. It's the most expensive of the models at $3,147.94 when you include tax. But there's a catch. The actual body of the 1000 cost about $2,000 US dollars, but Sony introduced a cloud service which is mandatory if you purchase from them, meaning you have to pay upfront an extra $1,000, which is really stupid in my opinion. So the IBO ends up being roughly $3,000 US dollars new. The design of the 1000 is very much modeled after a puppy. The movements are extremely lifelike, but a lot of people have mixed feelings about the new IBO. Despite the price, it doesn't do nearly as much as some of the older models, and some people think the design crosses over into Uncanny Valley territory. The 1000s are only available in white in the US, but in Japan they also have a chocolate version that kind of looks like a beagle. The caramel version, which is Dorito orange, let's be honest and the black sesame version, which is a light gray. I personally think they're adorable, but they are very polarizing, which we'll talk more about later. But let's talk about the cloud service for a hot minute. What is it that you're paying an extra thousand dollars for when you buy the new iBo? You're paying for an app. That's right, an app. The My iBo app allows you to set up your iBo by selecting their name and gender, access and perform certain tricks, view the pictures your iBo takes, and update your iBo to perform new tricks as Sony releases them. And that is where your extra thousand dollars goes. It goes to keeping the app connected and keeping your iBo updated for a year. If I sound salty, that's because this app is the slowest thing in the known universe. It's glitchy, it takes ages to load, and it really doesn't do all that much. Granted, it is cool to be able to see the pictures your iBo takes, but you could do that before for free. And yes, Sony's updates are super fun. They recently added an update where you can feed your iBo, which is super cute, although you do have to pay for iBo food, which I'm still salty about. Where is that thousand dollars going, Sony? But it is fun. I'm just salty. My sodium levels are very high right now. Quick note here, this video has taken a year to make and this portion is now technically outdated, but I wanted to include it to show you exactly how Sony deals with technical problems. The IBO 1000 is the one IBO that I really don't recommend for beginners. Not only is the price just insane, but the 1000 is very much a prototype product. If you haven't noticed already, Sony has a bad habit of releasing unfinished things, fixing them later, and then pretending that it never happened. And that's exactly what's happening right now. While the IBO 1000 is an absolutely amazing piece of technology, it's proven to have detrimental design flaws. Because of the way the 1000's legs are built, they're guaranteed to fail over time. Not only does Sony refuse to own up to this. How is Sony addressing the IBO for broken legs? It's broken up being addressed right now, uh, but very few units have but they don't actually have a solution for it, and have confirmed that instead of fixing the problem, they're simply sending out replacement units to confirm that you do switch like the physical body in its entirety. Sure. There are already some people in the community investigating this and trying to come up with a solution, but at this stage, we're just not getting any help from Sony. And if I had to take a guess at how these fail, and this is just speculation, but based on what I'm seeing, it would appear that this part cannot handle the weight of the dog during normal operating conditions and it develops a crack through it. And now we jump to the future, and thanks to some great research from Jayberg, we kind of have an answer. 
I'd highly recommend checking out his full 12 minute video explaining IBO 1000 hip dislocation, but here's a quick clip of it for context. And we can see here that Sony has actually quietly and without announcing anything, revised the design of these parts slightly. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? IBO Supercore who? IBO 7M1, 2, and 3 where? They always do this, and yet everyone is still surprised when it happens. So, as Jayberg has said, Sony hasn't formally announced any changes to their design, even though they've clearly made some. But it appears that they've only made changes to the front legs, not the back ones. So even after all that, we still have to worry about something breaking. And because of this and the cloud thing, I really don't recommend buying 1000 secondhand. I know it's tempting, sometimes you can get them a lot cheaper from Japan, but it's just not worth it in my opinion. Sony's very finicky and they won't even fix a Japanese iBo, nor will you be able to connect to the cloud service. The only way to get around this is to have a prepaid Japanese plan, which is not super common since lots of people who sell their iBos will cancel the plan, or somebody in Japan paying for the cloud service there. So if you're gonna get one of these guys, I would buy them directly from Sony. You get the warranty, you get the cloud plan, and if things start breaking and Sony secretly makes another change, you'll be able to get it fixed. And I love iBos, but man, Sony is just super sleazy in their business practices, and it's a real shame. I hope you guys enjoyed this brief introduction to iBos. This video was very much an experiment and took over a year to make, so for my future guides, I'm gonna try to be more specific instead of trying to tackle every single model at once. So if you guys have any specific questions about iBos, feel free Free to leave them in the comments below. Anyways, I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you next time. Bye!